Uh, thank you all for coming here today. Obviously, with the uh, the recent floods in Queensland, Southeast Queensland, um, we thought it was a fantastic opportunity. With obviously the partnership that we have, obviously David Noble used to be at the club. Um, Jack Zebel has, and a few of his players have obviously uh, decided to auction off their boots, as well as five or six of our players out of the leadership group. Um, so the game tomorrow night will actually be a bit of a flood appeal game. Uh, there'll be obviously the boots that are going out for auction. Our girls have also, all the proceeds from their Indigenous jumpers earlier this season uh, will go towards the flood appeal. There'll be activities around the outside of the ground where gold coin donations will also go towards the cause. So thanks so much for North Melbourne for obviously getting involved in the whole process and um, yeah, hopefully it's a good match and, and we can raise a lot of money for the, the victims that have been affected by the floods. Jack, how easy was it for you to get involved in tell us through the process of who ran you guys and said, can you help us out? Yeah, no, it's a, a very, very easy decision. Actually, really excited to be able to help in any way we can and feel very fortunate, to be honest, to be um, part of this match. Um, watching from afar down south in Melbourne, um, what what took place up here in southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales as well is a, a um, fair bit of, um, obviously, fairly big impact um, with the floods that happened. So for us to be able to just come up here and we're going to play a game anyway, but to be able to raise some money and you know, auction off a pair of boots it's very minuscule in what we can do, but might have a bit of an impact for a lot of people around. So I'm not sure of the process. I know Nobs has got plenty to do with the lines up here, so I think there might have been a few phone calls between a few key figures, and um, there wasn't many questions after that. It was just how, how can we help and what do you need us to do uh, from that point? Big Roots fan in Southeast Queensland is going to fork out a bit of money, or maybe someone down in Melbourne wants your boots really badly? I don't care who buys them as long as they buy for a lot. <laughs> um, we can do a meet and greet after as well if someone <laughs> pays overs for them. So um, yeah, they're good boots. I mean, they're Nice new Pumas, we can give them by for your kids, whatever you want, really. Um, trying to sell them. What size is that? What size is that? Size 11, but uh, yeah. So, no, at the end of the day, um, it's about raising as much money as we can. So, if somebody forks out overs for them, it's for a good cause. Um, the money's going to be well used as well. I know that a lot of people need it at the moment. So, it's, yeah, as I said, it's a privilege to be up here, being able to help. So, you were really, I would say, a bit emotional last time we were talking about this and how personally affected and the team was affected. Um, you must be really happy that you can. Yeah, absolutely. I think Jack hit the nail on the head there. It's whatever we can do, um, you know, it's probably not going to be much, but it certainly might, you know, change a few people's lives. And I think that's really important. Um, I've raised the awareness around it and, and hopefully people can donate. So, uh, you know, there's been players, coaches, our AFLW side, obviously affected by the floods as well. And I remember driving to that press conference and just seeing people's whole livelihoods out on the street, um, getting put in the back of tips, uh, tip trucks and bobcats cleaning it all up. It was, um, yeah, quite a delu deluge, 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 yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that we are able to have this uh, this game and obviously um, we encourage all the people in Brisbane to get out and support and obviously donate as best you can. In a simple, just lip service for me, you went through, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was sort of crept up on us a little bit, and uh, yeah, I mean, there was nothing that we could do. It wasn't, couldn't move quickly enough to get our stuff off the ground or, or whatnot. So, um, you know, it was great to see the community actually come out as quickly as they did, and you know, made sure we were alright and our next door neighbours were alright. And um, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's the community that actually helps get you through it. So, um, you know, big thank yous to all those people that helped out. Friends now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, uh, you know, we want four points, they want four points. Um, you know, we've had some, some great matches in the past, so uh, this weekend's no different for us, and I'm sure it'll be the same for North. I was going to say, what did you take out of that? Have you, have you got a bit of an insight of where Brisbane are coming from? No, I, I uh, completely understand where Brisbane are coming from. They've been one of the best teams in the comp for the last two years, and uh, we're under no illusions when you come to Brisbane um, to play Brisbane in Brisbane. Um, it's a hell of a task, and it's something we're really, we're really looking forward to as well. Uh, pin ourselves against one of the best teams in the comp and, and see where we're at, so we're, we're really excited by the challenge. It's been a really bit of a graveyard the last couple of years that has gathered for visiting teams. Do you like that challenge of coming here and silencing a, a very one-sided parochial Brisbane crowd? Yeah, we love that challenge. Um, we actually haven't played here for a couple of years, I think pre-COVID, obviously throughout COVID is a bit different with um, the hubs and stuff up here, but um, we've pretty, had a pretty good actually record um, up here up until that point. So uh, I know it's been a little bit of a time. We've had a lot of change at our footy club and a lot of our boys actually haven't played at the Gabba before. So um, it'll be a really exciting challenge for our team. And, and as I said before, they're one of the best teams in the comp, Brisbane. So we're just, yeah, super excited to be able to pin ourselves against them and to see where we're at. You're welcome. The idea of it's nearly 30 degrees in April. <laughs> 
good approach that? No, it probably doesn't change too much because down south it's been quite hot. Um, also, we played on Sunday, I think it was 29 degrees um, at Marvel Stadium with the roof shut and she was baking like an oven in there as well. So um, I'm hopeful at 7 o'clock tomorrow night it might drop a couple of degrees. Um, generally up here, night games are a little bit slippery, um, which we're well accustomed to as well. Um, we'll have to make a couple of adjustments uh, with the ball handling stuff, but again, that's just what you get when you, you go away on the road. We're looking forward to it. What are you expecting? What are you looking for from uh, Jaden? Steve O? Yeah, and we're, um, obviously, Steve O went away last week and played in the VFL and played a really good game. Um, played his role for the team and, and find himself back in the team in the seniors this week. Um, so for us, it's just how he can contribute um, to help get his job done for the team. And we know what he can do when he's up and going with the ball in his hand. He can kick goals from just about anywhere and accumulate big numbers through the midfield. And um, I think the most important thing for us is that he just does his job. And when he does that well, um, all the rest comes. Sometimes you just need a bit of a... I mean, he went back to BFL, but sometimes you just need a break. And as bad as it is that someone else gets injured, it gives an opportunity to come straight back in. And and, and perform straight away. Absolutely, and I think he got a lot of confidence out of last week as well. Just going back and um, just playing footy and enjoying footy for what it is. Um, and I think so far this week, he's really just had a really good energy about him, um, which is exciting for us. And hopefully we can get him back playing his best football really quickly. There's been so much pressure on him. High draft pick that highs, big name recruit for you guys. Do you see that that pressure maybe has affected him over the last year and a half? Or is that something that you guys have talked to him about or, or tried to help him deal with the expectation? Because he's still such a, such a young kid. He is. You forget that he's only 22, I think. So it um, feels like he's been in the system a lot longer. Um, but Steve, I will tell you, and, and everyone at North will let you know that he puts more pressure on himself than, than anyone puts on him about his own performances. He's got real pride in his performance. So when those performances for himself aren't up to scratch, he obviously um, wants to change that really quickly. He's very impatient, getting better, which we love to see. Um, so for us, it's just about how he can contribute to the team, do his job the best he can. Um, and if he does that um, this weekend, we'll be wrapped because um, we know what he's capable of with ball in hand, as I said before. And um, yeah, as soon as he gets back to playing um, the footy, we know he can. It's going to be better for the team. Sounds like you handled that setback pretty well last week, Jack. Going back to you. that what you've seen around the club? Yeah, mate, his attitude was outstanding. Um, never easy for you know a high-profile recruit to to. Um, be omitted and sent back to the VFL, but his attitude going to the game and the way he played, the way he got through it, um, was outstanding and it's a true testament to his character and that's why I think he'll bounce back really quickly because he's got that attitude. And there's a lot of chat around here, as we've heard then, about thoughts going half back. That's something you did like a year or so ago. Like, what, what do you find the hardest adjustment was? Oh, yeah, well, I suppose it's, it's a a really exciting move and Zork summed it up really well before about how um, it sort of refreshes you a little bit towards the back end of your career um, and the way you see the game from behind the footy I think you can have more benefit as a leader from behind the footy than you know in front of it or, or around the footy at times because you can see a lot more. Uh, probably the hardest thing was just you know making your mistakes quickly so that you can learn from them. Um, uh, I think that's that's one thing is when you make a mistake in the midfielder as a forward it sort of gets covered up a little bit by the rest of the team, but when you're a defender and you make a mistake, it generally results in a goal. So um, trying to eliminate those mistakes as quick as you can um, and also now your role, I think it's the, the two main important things that I got out of like, my first 12 months as a defender. Does that mean you put stuff through, the traffic through, make you earn those or maybe you earn those mistakes? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, Zorks is a quality player and uh, we put a lot of time into him wherever he plays, whether it's up forward, in the midfield, um, down back, watch his vision during the week and he had plenty of footy and, and had a big impact on the game from half back. So there's no doubt be a bit of a plan to quell his influence. And um, But to Brisbane's credit, across all lines um, of the ground, they've got quality players that, that are really, really dangerous. So um, we're going to have to be on our toes tomorrow night to make sure we get the job done. Speaking of quelling influence, there always seems to be a talk whenever someone has a massive game to, to send someone to run with them. Lockie had a, a huge game like Neil, last week. You guys planning to put a bit more work into him, put someone in, in unlike the runners last week? Yeah, well, I think at a... Um you know, at an observation level, it probably doesn't look like there's much going into Lockie last week, but no doubt the Bombers coaches box would have been trying a few different things. But when a player like Lockie gets on a roll, um, it's very hard to stop. But I know our coaches have got plan A, B, C and D lined up, ready to go. Um, and it'll just be up to us on how well we can execute our plans to hopefully nullify his impact. And again, um, Zork's rolled through a few of their midfielders um, in lines and, you know, Bailey and McGluggage and these guys who are really up and coming and really, really exciting players. And if you if you don't pay them any attention, they'll get off the chain as well. So. Um, um, across all lines, we're going to have to be on our toes, as I said before, to, to get this job done.